Hello. So if you are thinking of buying a telescope, one of the things you want to consider would be the resolution of the telescope or the resolving power of the telescope because you'll be using the telescope to look at stars, right? And there are many stars which are very close together. So if they're too close together, their images may overlap so much that you can't tell one star from the other. So if you want to have high resolving power, do you think a big telescope with a big opening will be better or would a small opening be better? If you are used to the pinhole camera, you'll probably say that small hole is better, right? But you are wrong. Now, as you decrease the pinhole camera's hole, the image does become sharper. But when it's too small, the image will start to blur again. Why is that so? Because you know light diffracts when it passes through an opening. And the smaller the hole, the wider it spreads. So even for a pinhole camera, you don't want the hole to be too small. So here's an illustration. So we have two objects A and B forming the images at A prime and B prime. But this is if the light doesn't diffract as it passes through the hole, right? So this diagram is a more accurate uh, illustration. So both A and B will form images which are kind of smeared, right? Kind of spread out. So I guess you can imagine if it's too spread out, the two images will overlap too much and become unresolvable. So if the two images are too close like this, then everyone agrees that this is totally unresolvable. If the two images are spaced well apart, even though both of them are smeared, both of them are spread, they are still totally resolvable. So how close can they be before they become unresolvable? If you ask me, I say something like this will be good when this guy's first minima coincides with the other guy's first minima. Do you agree with me? Well, that will be my criterion, huh? Chua's criterion. But nobody listens to me. Lah. Everybody listens to Riley. So there's this Riley's criterion, which says that the two images are just resolvable if one guy's first minimum coincides with the other guy's peak. So you realize these two are actually the single slit diffraction patterns, yeah? So the central maximums have already overlapped. But according to Riley, this amount of overlap is still okay. As long as one guy's first minimum coincides with the other guy's peak, there's enough separation between them to be resolved. Now notice the spacing between the two images is decided by the angular separation between the two objects. But the spread of each image is determined by the size of the slit. If you think of it as a narrow slit, then we have the formula, right? The first minimum happens at lambda divided by b, where b is the slit width. So Riley's criteria basically says that two images are resolved when the angular separation alpha is equal to the first minimum angle. If you're talking about stars, we have no say over alpha, right? I mean, you, you cannot ask the stars to move further away from each other. But what you can control is the slit width. The bigger the slit width, the smaller the spread, and the more resolvable the two images will be. For example, this one here is when your slit width is too small, resulting in a large first minimum angle. So the spread is too big, and these two images are not resolvable. So what you can do is to have a larger slit width, so that the first minimum angle becomes smaller. So see, the spread is now uh, smaller, and therefore the two images can be resolved. But this is an overkill, huh? it more than fulfills the Riley's criteria. If you want to just fulfill Riley's criteria, you just need B to be large enough so that the first minimum angle matches the angular separation. See, the spread, the first minimum angle matches the angular separation. So back to the telescope, you have to realize that the opening here, the size of the lens is equivalent to the slit width. Of course, the lens does more than that, huh? there's a lot of focusing mechanism, but the opening will decide how much the light will have diffracted before even you try to do all the focusing. Then you might say, I thought light diffracts very little. And with such a big opening, wouldn't the light be like practically not diffracted at all? Well, you're right. But then if you're into astronomy, you're looking at stars whose angular separation could be very, very, very small. So you cannot tolerate even the slightest amount of diffraction. That's why at the science centers, you can find telescopes with such big openings. And the telescopes that are even this big, that looks like, I don't know, a few hundred 
meters diameter so this is actually a antenna dish we're using this uh, to listen to radio waves from outer space because we want to listen into the aliens we want to know whether they have any plan to invade earth now because radio waves have very long wavelength right so if the lambda is very big your slit wave better be even larger in order for your first minimum angle to be small so you have a better chance to resolve two radio wave sources which are too close together Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!